Departemen uh, Teknik Geologi Universitas uh, Gajah Mada. Saya di sini uh, Rahmadi Dayat uh, akan menjadi moderator pada webinar ini bersama dengan uh, dua pembicara kita yang merupakan alumni dari Pasca Sarjana khususnya di jenjang doktoral degree di uh, Departemen Teknik Geologi uh, Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, baik pada kesempatan ini nanti pembicara pertama adalah Dr. Afika Rahim jadi ladies first uh, yang kemudian akan dilanjutkan dengan uh, pembicara kedua yaitu uh, Dr. Sarji Winardi. Uh, sebelumnya uh, saya akan sampaikan di setiap sesi karena ada dua pembicara sehingga setiap sesinya akan berlangsung selama satu jam uh, untuk 45 menit uh, presentasi kemudian dilanjutkan 15 menit terakhir uh, untuk tanya jawab khusus untuk seri perta uh, sesi pertama nanti akan menggunakan bahasa Inggris uh, dan pertanyaan yang uh, nanti akan datang akan saya screening dari WebEx chat uh, dan ke YouTube nanti jika waktu memungkinkan oleh karena itu mohon untuk uh, menulis pertanyaan dengan nama lengkap sehingga nanti bisa saya panggil uh, jika masih hadir bisa bertanya secara langsung atau jika tidak nanti saya akan uh, membacakan uh, pertanyaannya uh, baiklah langsung saja uh, so uh, dr uh, afika rahim will be our first center uh, she is a uh, lecturer from university technology malaysia and she has eight years experience and she also graduated from sandwich program uh, which is UKM and Kyushu University with JICA scholarship. Uh, her topic would be the geology and the performance of tunnel boring machine for Pahang and Selangor project. Uh, so Dr. Afika Rahim, uh, time is yours. Thank you. Uh... Firstly, I would like Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and I would like to say thank you very much for inviting me. Um, Department Geology, uh, Fakultas Teknik uh, Universitas uh, Gajah Mada. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, today, I would like to uh, share with you guys um, part of my research in tunnel boring mission uh, which have done in uh, previous years in 2015 until sorry 2014 until 2015 and um, I think we can start with this video let's um, I would like to share you some of the video that um, have been recorded by the one of the journalists from uh, UK about our project uh, which uh, entitled Hard Rock um, TBM, TBM meaning Tunnel Boring Mission in Pahang, Langoro Water Transfer Tunnel in Malaysia. So, so this is the project. So the purpose is to transfer the tunnel from the very rural area of Pahang to Kuala Lumpur, which is the main city of Malaysia, and also the outskirts cities, which is Seremban, um, Putrajaya, Cyberjaya, and so on. So for those who ask, um, we have to work. Um, during the research, I have to go to the tunnel 
at the same time as other labors and workers as well. So we have to get in at seven o'clock in the morning, seven to seven o'clock in the morning, and um, uh, get out from the tunnel around four o'clock. And for Muslim, uh, because I think there's two Muslims there, uh, we have to jama the solat for Zohor and Asar for for for, for, for the whole uh, for the whole working time. So I did it for the past six months. So because there's no space inside for the for us to pray and whatnot, because it's very very confined and it's very risky. And the whole lap was 44.6 kilometers, and my step is only at TBM1, which is uh, about 11 kilometers. Many grounds for the way out here, the five and more. The five concrete was the entire concrete aggregate, which contains fibers. The benefits of that that we found on this project. This is the supporting mechanism. Routing. You would not get the rebound, but you get some normal concrete, five to seven percent rebound. We can use this fiber mortar system concurrently with the boring operation. The benefits of the continuous sunlight are far outweigh the use of the <coughs> You're limited by your logistics of the sun regarding how quick you can get. Obviously, on 11 kilometers, that would be quite a task to ensure that you always have much to on them you can get it into the TBM. Obviously, on 11 kilometers, that would be quite a task to ensure that you always have much to on the machine when you need it. The companies have worked that exceptionally well. Yeah. So, after that, all the excavator was at the tunnel. So, I was operating Chester, really. And this is the only space that we can get in to get the air condition and this is the monitoring systems is placed and it's air conditioned so we do have to queue up before to start to continue our work like if i feel very very fatigued and very tired we get into that monitoring room for at least five minutes and then we get out because inside of the tunnel is a very, very super hot very warm very confined and very high pressure the ventilation was quite, quite, quite challenging. And uh, that is how we get it inside by the locomotive. And this is me with the senior geologist. to get into the thermal boring machine to check if there's um, rocks or rock mass being stuck inside that machine. Yeah, and we shall continue with the PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Okay. So we shall start. Okay. So um, for some people, so they might define boring in different ways. So what boring means to you might be different to me. So, and this is the video that I've shown you just now. So now I think you guys have opened your eyes what boring really means. It's very interesting one. Okay, so the title for the sharing session today is Geology and Performance of Tunnel Boring Machine at Pahang Selangor Raw Water Transfer Tunnel Project in uh, Malaysia. So Pahang is um, um, located at south e uh, at north, uh, east coast of Malaysia and Selangor is very nearby to Kuala Lumpur, which is the man, uh, main capital city of uh, Malaysia. 
And these are the problem statement. These are the problems occurred. These are the issues that we face during the uh, tunnel mapping. So during the excavation, there is a large quantity of uh, groundwater inflow encountered at certain certain areas at certain um, combined joints. So um, every day, what they need to do is they need to uh, monitor the amount of water that goes, that ingresses, that influx inside the tunnel. And then what they do is um, this is what this is part of the monitoring uh, um, schedule that 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 has disturbed the performance of the tunnel excavation. So the objective of the tunnel tunnel uh, project is to to make sure that um, they can excavate or they can uh, correct in Malay words as much as two as you can per day. So every day they have to make sure that the excavation rate is smooth and as much batu as possible, as much rock as possible that they um, um, might have. That. So that is the result for that for that day. They call it as a uh, successful, successful excavation uh, rate. So this is how they monitor the high water inflow or outflow at the portal. And this is how it looks like. And this is um, the excavation machine where this machine operates um, 24 hours. And uh, that is the reason why in prior to that excavation process, we need to do the geological mapping beforehand. So it's like a few days before we excavate, the geologist has to inform the engineer that, okay, this is uh, the rock is like this and like that. With this condition, we can excavate and we can project like how many, uh, how much excavation on that day. So, and this is um, the support system, the rib steel on top of the, uh, at the crown of the tunnel. Next, we move on to the um, main issue. So the main problem during the excavation is the water inflow, which encountered about three to five tons per minute. So when we're talking about tons and we're talking about minutes, it is considered as severe. And um, there is once, well, there, there was once that most of the geologists and um, engineers were not allowed to come in to um to carry out any exercise to do any work on that day because the water is so excessive and the water is like it's like too much about sometimes about three meters sometimes like two meters even taller than me so uh we we were prohibited to come in to do our work daily so um, this is how it looks like so the TD is the tunnel distance compared to like if you do highway or pavement project, they will use chainage or CH. So for tunnel, they use TD as tunnel distance. This is a long and troublesome story. So this one is like, we call it like open-ended. It never ends. So the water keeps on coming in and we need to also excavate the a rock. And sometimes we face soft ground and critical uh, ground condition and yet we need to also encounter the water inflow uh, issues and for, for that um, the the company the contractor also invited more more than 25 companies small and big companies to come in and to do some extra consultation work and they have found three uh, main reason why there's a lot of water which is unsuspected and after six or six to eight months it's already like it's already a new norm for us to get into the tunnel with a lot of water this is the disturbed monthly progress so as like um for tunnel process for excavations so the uh, monthly progress is number one depend on the excavation and also depends on the geological con conditions so here as what they have predicted the actual plan is supposed to be sorry the plan is supposed to be 509.8 meter per month but we only can achieve like 389.6 meter per month okay so it's reducing about 23.6 percent 
on that particular day, on that particular month, sorry. So this is due to the large groundwater into. So that is the main issue in this tunnel. And this is the dramatic increase of uh, groundwater. Sorry, it's been, it's been hidden. Okay, next we move on to these um, cross sections of the uh, tunnel. So this is the whole um, uh, tunnel, which is planned to have 44.6 kilometers altogether. And we separated it into four NATS. NATS stands by uh, this one, New Austrian Tunnel Method and TBM. TBM is the boring mission. So TBM is the uh, machine that's usually being used for tunnel project for difficult condition. In this case, it's going to be um, granite. So, uh, so there are four netums here, which is uh, netum one, two, three, and then TBM one, two, and three, crossing the granite body, and then uh, it's um, ended by a netum four. And these are the tunnel excavation methods that uh, is commonly used uh, worldwide, which is a uh, new Australian tunnel machine and uh, tunnel, bo tunnel boring machine. So my study only consisted at this area, which is tunnel boring machine. And this is how the fabrication of the uh, TBM tunnel. So this is the process whereby when the um, tunnel boring machine arrived from Shanghai and then is uploading in Port Klang uh, in Malaysia and then they assemble and then moving it and then uh, before launching there's a like there's a series of fabrication and assembly and it's 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 very time consuming it's very very it needs a very strict schedule so that we can control the traffic on the road you also can control the uh, delivering um, process during the tunnel is not easy during the custom immigration and whatnot. So this process take about one and a half months for one TBM machine. Can you imagine that? It's it's very long and very meticulous uh, process. So my study area is very small, which is two only two kilometers. My masters last time and. Um, I studied at the TD 2000 until 4000. And these are the geology of the study area. See, can you see that this is like the whole, uh, the pink color shows the granite and um, the another section towards the end is medium green granite. Um, this and this is where the main lineament LBLCs are uh, located, crossing the tunnel, and we also crossing the main fault lines. Okay, and that is the very tricky uh, conditions over there. And here is the uh, change of the tunnel uh, distance, as well as the type rock, the descriptions, and the tunnel sections of the machines that we uh, employed. And this is the study is all about. So my study consists of geological structure studies. Uh, and then we go for mineralogy, rock mass properties uh, by using the tunnel mapping. And then further on to the mechanical properties, more to destructive tests. And then with that, we combine the water inflow uh, analysis and then with the finite element method, and then we combine and find relationships between that. So hence, in short, uh, this study is actually to study the disturbing, to disturb um, factors, which is uh, high water inflow into the tunnel to the excavation rate or progress rate. And this is where I've done the geological mapping. So. These are those uh, uh, geologists working uh, every day, daily. So they do the geological mapping here and there. Like every day, they need to also note and acknowledge uh, the water seepage as well as uh, any um, 
malfunction of the system. For example, if that day, if those days, there's also malfunction of um, water piping, let's say. So they need to do some report as well, immediate report uh, for that day. And then also for some reason, sometimes if the excavation rate is getting low or even uh, too constant several days, we also need to find the um, reason for that. So this is the these cutters mounted in the cutter head. So there's actually uh, not like uh, there's a actually there's, there's a bigger picture. So the hole is like around uh, one meter length, and if you are if you are small enough to fit in, you can like, actually go through that excavation uh, cutter head, and you can see the um, um, ground condition in front of you so you can touch the rock is it if it's okay or not so i managed to get into that cutter head machine and then i managed to touch the rock so whenever i touch the rock i say okay this is fine so tomorrow we can proceed with this and that rate okay so from there we can predict as well and we can project the excavation rate next is the method this is very basic method that we have done for kinematic analysis journal and rose diagram and this is how uh, we monitor the TBM monitoring. Usually, um, uh, it's not being done right after we, we, we do the uh, tunnel, tunnel mapping exercise. It's already done like a few weeks after that, and we compare with the actual and after that with the actual and uh, plan uh, progress. So this is only for very technical um, monitoring process. So this engineer will actually um, uh, monitor the excavation and boring process if there's a worst case for example that if we face uh for example pocket water okay so then uh he can actually tell the um, engineer uh that to stop for a while and then to 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 cattle the problem then uh, it will be continued by the excavation over and over again and this is um what what we did so uh, we brought those samples to uh, Hokkaido University because I did attachment there in Hokkaido University. And we prepared some samples for UCS and Triaxial. Uh, that those uh, samples, those tests will be used later in finite element method in order for us to correlate between the uh, deformation, uh, between the deformation test as well as the water ingress. Next, we moved on to the results. And then we found from the joint orientations, there are few dominance um, joints with the lineaments. So as I've explained earlier, that this, um, this tunnel is actually crossing a very major fault, which is lineament B and lineament C. We are crossing that line, so that makes it um, a bit tricky on that area. So... And then uh, there's also another one is combining both uh, directions of the joints. Both directions is quite tricky. Sometimes we can face very, very wet. Sometimes can face very, very dry. So we uh, classify it into few um, uh, classifications with the dominant joint, which is the orientation of the fork and the water inflow or the water amount. And then also as the RQD that we have mapped before and then um, so there is a significance of trending of joint behavior with the water amount uh, so we can see that there is um, possible three possible answers which is also valid by the geomap as well as by the uh, triaxial test mechanical test and also uh, UCS test which is the main fault zone the perpendicular to the liniment, the wet joints showed the combination of these both, uh, factor one, factor two, and also as pocket water. Some reason, for some reason, out of nowhere, we face pocket water. Pocket water is like this uh, pocket of water, which is, it, it looks like a bowl of water, and then we cross it. And somehow, the excavation decreases, and somehow, sometimes, the, dec the excavation increases. So meaning that is a that is a might be possible pos, there is a possible answer that we cross the pocket water or the bowl of water. 
the explanation for that is that uh, the orientation. So the orientation main um, a very uh, important role here, which is either is cross the main lineal line, it cross perpendicular or it cross combination of that lines. And then this is the mechanical test. So we combine the mechanical test to the uh, orientations, um, deformation test, and as well as um, strength of the test, strength of the rock, sorry. And then this is the results to say that the low or the deformation test that we have done for the mechanical test shows exactly at the place where the groundwater inflows occur. And this is where we got the test of the compressional test. And it's this is the most uh, relevant answer as well, which shows that from some reason, uh, the with the um, for some reason, this sample shows um, deformation at one to nine hundred and forty mil per minute, uh, forty 